Hello, and welcome to another In Rhythm Lightning Talks. I am Ted Parton. I'm your host for today. Uh, today, we have Sid So, one of our awesome web designers and, and software engineers with us. And he's going to talk to us about using GitHub Actions. Uh, just as a, as a reminder, we have our Lightning Talk every Thursday afternoon at 5.15 Eastern. And we thank you so much for joining, uh, joining us today. Uh, with that, Sid, take it away. Uh, thanks, Ted. So welcome everyone to my lightning talk on GitHub Actions. Uh, first off, what is a GitHub Actions? Uh, funny, funny enough, it, it although it's an uh, ends with an S, it is a collective noun. So it is uh, what is <laughs> what is GitHub Actions? Uh, so GitHub Actions is a CI/CD platform that allows you to automate your build, tests, and deployment pipeline. And this is not to be confused with Actions, uh, which is something that also exists on this platform, which is a custom application uh, that performs a complex but repeatable task. And I'll show you uh, what an action is in a couple of seconds here. So first thing I wanted to do is uh, talk about the usual setups for setting up a CI CD um, pipeline. Uh, or setting up CUICD infrastructure. Uh, so usually you, you would have to set up uh, webhooks. You would have to buy hardware or set up an instance uh, to install the application for the uh, CICD application. Uh, you have to maintain the hardware or instance. Uh, and you install security patches. And oftentimes, you'd spool down the idle machines when necessary. Now, with GitHub Actions, all that is unnecessary. All you need is one file in your repo, uh, at least one, one, one file to start off with. Uh, benefits of GitHub Actions is that the CI CD pipeline setup is simple. Uh, as, as shown previously, you know, all you need is to, start up, to start up is just one file. Uh, it responds to any webhook on GitHub. So whenever you push up to a branch or merge a PR, to the main branch, uh, these things can trigger the workflow, uh, the corresponding workflow that is expected. Uh, there's a community powered uh, reusable workflows. So this ties into the GitHub marketplace, which is a place where you can find um, various degrees of actions. So GitHub actions created by the GitHub organization and as well as those created by um, other users. And uh, there's support for any platform using any language for any cloud, um, cloud service. Now, the cons about GitHub Actions is that it only works on GitHub. Uh, so now we can jump right into the demo. Uh, so the first thing I have here is deployment. So I'm just gonna look into a deployment file which is typically a YAML file. And uh, so this is like the one, young, sorry, let me just back up here. Uh, when you go to the repo, uh, there is this tab called actions here. And under actions, you have a listing of all the workflows that you have. And these are listed here because there is a file in .github uh, slash workflows. So if you look at, workflows, you see three files, which corresponds to the, to the three uh, workflows that were listed on the previous page. Uh, so for the deployment file here, I just wanted to talk about this one little section here. So in a deployment file, uh, there is a jobs and jobs. Uh, for this job, we have the name lint uh, and because it runs to lint at the end. And uh, basically we're setting it up by running it on Ubuntu latest. And we have three steps. So we get the code, uh, we install dependencies, and then we lint the, lint the project. So one of, the, um, one of the stumbling blocks of starting with, um, you know, setting up your pipeline is trying to figure out um, what exactly am I writing in this in this file here? Like, how do I get um, something like this um, 
uses actions slash checkout v3. Like, where does this come from? Uh, so what I wanted to show here is that um, GitHub, so github.com slash marketplace, um, there's this place which has, which you can search for actions. And under actions, uh, you can see the different categories. You can see actions for code review, for code quality, uh, deployment, uh, security, testing, and so forth. And so what I'm interested in right now is checking out. So I want to click on check out here. And as you can see, it says this action checks out your repository so your workflow can access it, which is basically what I want. I want to be able to check out my file. And under usage, it says uses action slash checkout at v3, which is exactly what I you know, have in this file. So you know, you're able to look at the marketplace, look at the, how it's used, and you know, copy and paste it right here into your file. Then the rest of it is just kind of normal um, development thing. So like npm CI to install and npm run lint to run the lint program on your on your project. Uh, and then test, test and deploy these diff these two jobs. They kind of do the same thing as well. So you're checking out the code. Uh, installing, but you're running test. And up here, uh, down here, you're installing the code and building as well. So they pretty much do very similar things. Uh, so one question I had um, as, been asked previously is, is that, you know, what are the names here and why do I care? Like, you know, is it necessary to call it get code, install dependencies? Uh, do I need to name every single step here? Uh, and also went here. And I would say that these names correspond to um, the console log that shows the results here. So under the lint, lint job here, so this is what you called it, uh, you get the get code, install dependencies, and lint. So at least this will tell you uh, each step um, each step that was performed and whether it performed successfully or not. Uh, so, sorry, just just one more thing. Is, uh, just, I wanted to talk about uh, what a job is. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. A job is just a list of series of steps here. And a step is just uh, an action or a task that is run. So, you know, these are the baby stuff. Uh, baby steps, so baby task for an, do an action or a task, and then job is just kind of the series of steps all together. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, next thing I want to do was a matrix demo. And first I wanted to talk about the steps here. So all that this does is check out the code, it sets up node, installs, and builds. So we're just building the project here, but more importantly, we're gonna look at this matrix here. And so what this is saying is that um, I wanna build, uh, build this project and I wanna test it on node version 12, 14, 16. I wanna use operating systems Ubuntu and Windows latest. Uh, I also wanna include node version 18 uh, on operating system Ubuntu, but I wanna ex exclude uh, node version 12 on Windows. And when I, when this is run, uh, when this is run, you can see that node version 12, Ubuntu, 14 Ubuntu, 14 Windows, 16 Ubuntu, 16 Windows, include 18 Ubuntu, but it excluded 12 Windows. So it ran according to the matrix I put out um, or that was set up in here. Uh, so, you know, this is kind of a, nice way to test all the different uh, permutations of, of uh, environments and their operating systems um, if your project needs so. The last thing I wanted to show for the demo was this website called Awesome Actions, which is another GitHub repo, uh, which basically is a curated list of awesome things related to GitHub Actions. So in here, you can see uh, mundane stuff like the actions checkout, actions at action slash checkout, which is basically the checkout that we just saw previously uh, with the usage here. And we can search further down. 
Oops. Uh, so over here, you can see there's this thing, uh, this action called mind your language action. So you can detect offensive comments and issues and pull requests and warn senders about them. And then also uh, you have this uh, NSFW detection. So detect not suitable for work content and committed files. Uh, so these are things you can just add to your um, pipelines, to your workflows. And just to show you other stuff that is further down, um, you got stuff on say semantic versioning, on testing, uh, code coverage, uh, pull requests. So these are links to help you set it up. Um, maybe you want to set up Docker here or Kubernetes. So these are ways to um, use an action to set up uh, any of these. Uh, there is tutorials and AWS and whatnot. So there's a lot of things actions can do. Uh, getting back to the demo here or to the lightning talk. So my basic takeaway for all you guys is that, you know, GitHub Actions is easy to use. So uh, try it out. Uh, so as a front end developer, uh, you know, we often have access to um, use the CI CD tools to deploy, but we don't often have the chance to set one up ourselves. Uh, so with GitHub Actions, everyone with a GitHub account has, um, has access to GitHub Actions uh, to build your own workflows and to peruse the marketplace. You know, when you search the marketplace, you can actually uh, find actions for the man mundane stuff. But who knows, you know, you might actually find stuff that you didn't know was possible uh, for a pipeline, but would be cool to implement uh, to, your existing, to your existing pipeline. Uh, and, you know, I think that's what is the power of GitHub Actions, you know, to be able to uh, find stuff, um, add it very easily, uh, and make it yours. Uh, any questions? He said, I've got a question for you. Have you played any but the automatic triggers with your actions? So I know you can you can run these manually, but you can also uh, sometimes configure your repo to do some automatic. Uh, so like on. Uh, yeah, so um, for example, here, this is this has an on push. So like oh, whenever yeah. whenever I push my code to the main branch, this will then trigger. Uh, other times. Um, other times it can be a manual push. So maybe I think down here somewhere will be like a click or sorry, I think somewhere down here will be like a, a button to press go uh, and it will, you know, that'll be the trigger to set a manual action from here. But yes, you can do um, based on um, based on some event, some mm -hmm. webhook. Hey, Sid, I have a question. <clears throat> so yeah, actually on this page right here, I see there's like some repetitive steps. So can you abstract those like sub steps out so you don't have to you know, explicitly write them each time or? Um, well, you can take stuff like, I don't know, uh, check out, install, something like this. Uh, so like these are repeated in each one. You can actually, you know, say create your own custom action, which does these two steps. So, you know, kind of like modularly, take these steps out and just call that action as one step here. Oh, okay. No way to do it like within this YAML file. You'd have to create a whole separate action. Uh, I believe so. I mean, that's the way I've seen it. Gotcha. I'm, okay. I'm no expert though. <laughs> yeah, cool, thanks. Yeah, so we have a, a, a question in the chat. Uh, Brian wants to ask, uh, do, uh, do these uh, build stuffs have a cache? Do they have a cache? So I believe uh, there is a cache uh, there's, that is possible because like uh, there are points where like you need to build your code, right? And so like you build your code and then you could have a different, uh, different job that takes that um, build, uh, the build code and does something with it. So then it deploys it somewhere. You know, sometimes that would be a different job. And so, you know, these jobs are kind of separate. That's why they have to check out and install each single time. So you can actually have a different job that actually, you know, you build the code, you cache it somewhere, you can grab it from the cache and then continue on with a different job. 
I don't have an example of that, but I know that's possible. Awesome, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Toff says there are caching mechanisms. Uh, he says, I believe, especially for uh, caching dependencies, for instance, node modules. Thanks, Toff. Thanks, Toff. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sid. This is really great. Uh, yeah, it's some really powerful stuff you can you can do with this. Thank you so much for sharing this with us.